Welcome back, St. Lucia. I am really thrilled, very pleased, happy to get some time with Mr. Schoen, Dupes Bryce. All How's right? It? How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Good morning. Listen, we're all smiles now, but if you know all the chat that he's been giving me off camera, it's not even funny, so. What? <laughs> no, that's just how, you know, you build your rapport, you do your pre-interview, and you make sure it's pretty early in the morning, you know, so you have to make sure that you... Yeah. On point. We have to make sure we help you wake up the right way, you yeah, know? Yeah, so, hey, <laughs> so if we have to get into some interesting conversation about music, that's, that's right. what we have to do. Now, a lot of you, I'm very certain by now you're familiar with Dupes. Um, and, of course, he's the man behind Dupes Did It Music. So tell us about that. Dupes Did It Music. Um, publishing, production company, songwriters. Um, we just work really, really hard to push the brand of St. Lucia through our music, throughout the world. So we've started maybe three years ago officially by putting out music and working with our flagship artist, me, Dupes. <laughs> um, but we also make contributions to a lot of music. I made a, a contribution to the music industry in St. Lucia for a lot of years now. I've been working with a lot of guys like Mecca, Shep Dog from down south, Shane Ross, Cherry L, Nelson Serie. Um, just bringing our brand of music to St. Lucia and now taking that brand of music and bringing it out to the world. So working really hard and I've been focusing on my solo career because, you know, if you don't make it as a success, success yourself, then how do you pull someone up? True. Mm -hmm. Very yeah. true. Now, um, we know you as the artist. Yes. You we also, well... Maybe not everybody might know, but you're also a songwriter. Songwriter, yeah. How do you develop these skills and these talents? A lot of hard work and practice and, and research. I mean, there are days that I sit in the studio and I just listen to music. And without even thinking about it, I'm actually analyzing it. And sometimes I hear something and I, and I can hear where it either came from or where it went, where it's, where it's going to. Um, just years and years of being dedicated to my craft. I think I was blessed in the sense that I was able to find my passion very early in life, but I never really embraced it. I was never really courageous enough to say, well, this is what I want to do, money aside, um, family thing aside, whatever the world may think aside. And, and I, in the last three years, as I bring it up again, I really took, that, took the bull by the horns and started working really hard towards my passion. Great. Now, you know, you said a keyword there that mm -hmm. really resonated for me. Okay. And you said courageous, mm -hmm. you know, because there's a lot of people. Um, whether you're a musician, singer, songwriter, painter, dancer, mm -hmm. but, you know, persons have this passion and sometimes they let fear, whether it is their own personal fear or the v people's opinion, right. something, there's something holding them back. Right. You know, no fingers pointing here, but... You I didn't point How anything. Do you <laughs> Is it you? Are you being held back by your fear? <laughs> I wonder. Wake but, up. <laughs> but yeah, what do you have to say to persons who are afraid to step out there and uh, go after it? Wow, there's so much I could say. Um, I was listening to Jamie Foxx in an interview the other day, and he said one question that he asked his daughter is, what is on the other side of fear? Nothing. You know, um, fear. Fear defines itself. False evidence appearing real. So sometimes the things that you fear the most are the things that you need to run towards because the obstacle is the way. So sometimes it's you that's holding yourself back. Like I said, I was 16 years old. I graduated from, from, from Vufort Comprehensive and I just knew that applying for all of these jobs and everything that this is the way that some people do it, there's nothing wrong with it because we need all of those things, was just not the way for me. And, and maybe, maybe it was God sending me the rejection letters and saying, this is not what you should do. And I built up the courage and I said to my father, well, I want to have a band. I want to be a musician. He says, well, you need to lay a strong foundation because that's a very expensive hobby. So from maybe <laughs> from 16 to 21, it was, an, it was a hobby. You know? So I became an entrepreneur. I started my own business. Mm -hmm. I started trying to figure out ways to make it happen. But then I realized that it's actually a career. And there are people that make money from the art that they do. And money is not the whole, it's not everything. It's true. You get what I'm saying? Because what's on the other side of money? How much money do you really need to say that you're this or you're that? And um, money, money is a promissory note for more money, for debt, for all of these different things. But if you live your dreams, you that could actually cycle. impact <laughs> lives. And, 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 you know, I've been going to the schools and talking to the students and trying to figure out what their dreams are. And Try, trying to get them, not trying, because I don't believe in trying, but actually getting them to see past just a dream and, and making it a reality. So that's, that's what I'm all about. I may have lost the question along the way, but I think the message is there. Fear nothing. Nothing to fear, but fear itself. Good. And you know, I think that's a very strong message mm -hmm. too, as well even for the youth coming up, because so many people are still on the traditional 
path, you know, right. like we've grown up, although I, I will say I find we are catching up now in St. Lucia, but we've okay. grown up in a society where it's, you know, you're raised thinking that you go to school and you need to become a doctor, right. a lawyer, you know, or have this, you know, suit and tie right. office job. Mm -hmm. But there's so much more out there that people can do. And I think we're in the generation now where you create your opportunities. Right. So Well, there's so many people in the world. There's so many people in St. Lucia. And we cannot neglect the fact that there are people that have economic issues. But if we really prioritize what life is about and everybody embraces what they want to do and what they're passionate about, I think we can create a world that everybody will be happy because there's somebody out there that loves farming. So as long as there's food on your table, what are you worried about? There's somebody else that's, that just loves doing woodwork and, and doing construction. My, I have an uncle that that's all, he, he's a teacher, but on weekends you swear he's, he's the world-class contractor. He, come, he works for hours on his house and does things like that. So if everybody embraces their passion, whether it's cooking, working, being a lawyer, entertainment, I think we can create a, a, a different world. And that's what my song Imagine is about. Right. I'm yeah. happy you said mm -hmm. that too because you have a new album coming up. Yeah. Um, that's going to be released in October, right? October 28th. Yeah. Right. But mm -hmm. you just released that new single, mm -hmm. Imagine. Yeah. So love the lyrics and the right. message. Tell us where that stemmed from. Imagine stemmed from a, a songwriting session where it's like there are things happening in the world and you look at your, your, the people that came before you, the Muhammad Ali's, the Malcolm X, the Martin Luther Kings, and you realize that these guys didn't have social media, didn't have Facebook or anything to get the message. They went out there and they spread their message with the world. So I'm very fortunate to be sitting in St. Lucia and have my own ideas or my own dreams for what the world could be like. And I wrote it down. And I put some music together and, you know, we started with a demo. That's how I do the songwriting process. You start with a demo, you start with an idea, and then you go and you sit with the other people on your team, whether it's your producer, your manager, somebody that you could throw, bounce the idea off of. And we had a couple conflicts on the lyrics because I was being very controversial about a few things. And then um, I can remember Jody saying, no, you need to be positive. There's enough of this message out there. Give the children something that they can aspire to. So Imagine was born from that, you know. Um, no matter your color, no matter what it is that you're going through, you could be something bigger than that. So that's where it started. Great. Mm -hmm. And um, so for this album, of mm -hmm. course, look out for it coming October. Yeah. Um, what is the album title? My album title is 3D. Um, I got the name Super Dupes because I'm very multifaceted. I would be a producer one time, a songwriter, a singer the other time. So the album gives me an opportunity to show the three sides. There's more than three sides, but 3D was catchy and I was born in the 80s. I love 3D movies. Um, <laughs> so it's all, it, all, it all ties in. It all gives you a piece of who I am. So you, you, you get the mind, the body, the soul, the music that will make you move, the music that, that you could fall in love to, the music you could fall out of love to, and, and just music to make you think about. You know. So um, I'm not the kind of artist that, that, that locks himself into a specific genre. You know, I listen to everything. I'm a music lover. I listen to classical. I listen to rock. I listen to soca. I listen to dance. But I love R&B music. So I'll be putting my, my, my paintbrush across all those genres and presenting something great to you guys. And that's good, too, because mm -hmm. we've already seen, you know, with your previous work, I would almost say that's like a teaser to this album yeah. because, mm -hmm. you know, you've had songs like Guilty, right. another favorite, again, just showing how dynamic you are, right. you know, um, Dip, dip, dip on the dip. floor, right? That was, yeah, so that's it's, it's, it's an interesting so thing. A nice mix. I love all of this music and I love like breaking the mold. Like, I love just pushing, pushing, pushing forward. Because even when I did dip, I said to Horseface, yo, this Afrobeat thing, there's something about it. I need to I be see, able to put infectious. my own. It's, it's infectious and it, it's part of us because we're from African heritage. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when he put the music together, I said, you know, that's why I spoke to you. And then we went to Libo and then we went around and we played around with it. And it, it, it it jumped ahead of a song I was going to put out. The song still hasn't come out yet. So um, <laughs> if you want to get an idea of where 3D is going, my EP is available from St. Lucia with Love. And um, it has all those tracks on it. It has Dip on the Floor, Your Body. It has Seasons. It gives you a, a kind of an introduction to who Dupes is. But um, what's most important with 3D is not just that we're doing an album, but it's the way we're doing the album. We're doing a pledge music campaign. So basically, you can be a part of the album like next week. You can be a part of when I'm writing the songs, helping me choose the cover art, um, helping me choose the listing of the songs. I want you guys to be a part of the experience because I love sharing, you know? So that's what it's going to be about. Great. Now, tell us where we can find your music, mm -hmm. where we can follow you, because you know you're big on social okay. media. Um, SherwinBryce.com, www. 
S H E R W I N N Bryce B Rice dot com. Um, you click Team Dupes, you join the mailing list, you get a you get a present in your email right away. You get you get Imagine, you will see a preview to my new music video, and you'll just be on the list where you get updates to everything that's going on. Um, and you'll find out how to join the Pledge Music campaign and be a part of 3D as it's being created. And social media, everything on social media is Dupes Did It. D U P E S D I D I T or Dupes Did It Music. Yeah, so just follow us everywhere and we'll make it happen. Now, of course, we're on Facebook at Dupes Did It. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So keep following him. I'm of the man, Super Dupes. So much more music to come. Who knows? Maybe we might work on something pretty soon. So he is one to watch. Keep it locked. Now, don't change that channel because when we come back, we have so much more coming. I promise you it's good. Thank you. <laughs> I told you not to go anywhere. I'm so happy that you came back. Now we have with us Mysterio, and he's going to tell us everything we need to know about the man called Mysterio. Yeah, good morning, good morning, everyone. I would just like to thank my, my supporters who have supported me for the past five years. In my upcoming as an artist, and I try to, every year, like I say, to bring out the very best. Um, I'd like to thank you for bringing me on your show. <laughs> Definitely our pleasure yeah. as well. Um, but you mentioned five years. Uh, yeah. When did it all begin for you? When did you realize that you wanted to become a soca artist? It was actually before the five years because I was um, always like a, a protégé, um, a kind of, uh, I was there like an apprentice to, to Ninja Dan. I was going everywhere he was going, assisting with his writing, he assisted me, grooming me, can be prepared for that big stage and stuff. Yeah. Great. So do you write your own material? I actually do. I get assistance from my producer, Miguel Joseph from Vibes Production. Um, we work together, we work hand in hand and we try to bring out the very best for Senator Carnival. Now definitely you've been producing some really good songs. Um, Tell us about your releases um, during the carnival season this year. Well, um, I only released one. That's because of um, system failure to my producer's um, computer. And he lost basically all his files. We, we were planning to drop at least five songs for the carnival. We had a lot of good songs, but then the system crashed. And so I'd like to apologize to St. Lucia for not keeping my word of releasing as many as I thought I would. But hopefully we're trying to see if we could break the barrier of releasing songs within the, the carnival season, try to release it annually. So we're trying, let's hope everything goes into plan. Um, we're trying to release as soon as septem September. Okay. Yeah, so we could actually bridge into the, the, the carnival um, of Trinidad and Tobago. Let's see what could happen. Yeah. All right, great. Now. How about your support system? You know, tell us more about your team that's behind you and helping you to get your music out. Well, um, actually, I'm still trying to get a closer, good team to work with me because I, I, I'm trying to bring out that brand. It's not no longer me, the artist, but the brand of Mysterio. Try to sell that brand, try to get a collective effort rather than one person assisting me and it's very hard. I can tell you Central is very hard music. You have to work at let's keep working at it. Hopefully one song breaks through and yeah, the rest will be history. Yeah. I you know honestly that's what it takes because earlier um, on one of our previous shows we saw Sidel come through and he said the same thing, you know, he was on the verge of giving up. Um, and then he had that one breakthrough song, Pandemonium and he said, you know what, that song was like a saving grace because he, he said if he, this song didn't catch, he was just going to give up. So, you know, it really takes a lot of perseverance and dedication. So where does that drive um, and love for music? Where did that stem from? Well, actually, in, in, um, growing up, my grandmother, God rest her soul, um, she always used to play records of, of uh, the... the, the um, the Calypsonians, the great Lord Kitchener, Sparrow, and so, like, as a child, you don't want to hear that, but it keeps on playing every day in your ears, and afterwards you get, 
you get used to yeah, it. And it sticks and with you. The melody and thing, I, I, I kind of grew fond of it. I grew to love it. And it actually helped craft that talent where I build up melodies very quickly. And that's what it is. In a, and as you could see in my, my, my songs, which I've written, it basically serves itself. Yeah. Good stuff. Now, recently, on the lighter side, you became a daddy, right? Yeah. You're, you have a son, correct? Yes, I do. Six months old. Six months old. So, how are you able to manage, you know, parenthood with your music career? Because we know how the times can be crazy and unpredictable. Yeah. How do you get that balance? Well, um, I try to give him as much time as possible. Like, well, my girlfriend, she already knows how much I love my music. So she basically is sacrificing. We do, the, the, um, we, we, li we live together and we work hand in hand in terms of, I get the afternoon shift or <laughs> the morning shift and then I work in the night with my producer concerning my music and stuff. So. So pretty much with the mommy daddy team, you guys have yeah. a shift system yeah. to make everything work out. Yeah. Good. Now, so far with your journey through music, what would you say has been your most memorable experience thus far? In music, on all. Well, um, with your performances, or you know, just with your music career so far, what would stand out the most for you right now? Well, the year of twenty fourteen where basically when I had a track entitled um, Now Go Home, um, oh. well, when it came out, it had, they, they had the likes of TJ who had released, um, there are too many other artists after Ricky T. And, and I realized that I got a lot of forward, a lot of airplay. So I gained phone calls from promoters who were already trying to book me before the event was trying to, was launched. And, that gave me a, a joy, like, hey boy, Mysterio, you starting to be noticed. And we, we used that opportunity to, to, um, to, to present, to show off my talent. And I got a lot of love from the supporters. And I, from there, I started realizing that I had a following. Yeah. Good. Now, you know, we've seen you, especially during the car carnival period, present and if not even participating on stage at some of the more popular events i know we caught up with you at euphoria as well too so as a local artist how do you feel now with the push that they're giving to ensure that we have more local artists with some of our major events during this season how do you feel about well, that I, I, well i must say our promoters are on point they say like some of the most talented, amazing artists. The, um, I would call them local, I would say I would call them national artists because they sometimes actually present themselves even much better than the regional artists. You, you, you hear from the ground, the people who come to the shows and the patrons stating that, wow, they should have a, whole, a local, a all local cast because the, the way that the local artists present themselves, perform, it's a really amazing. And where would you like to see yourself in the future? Do you see yourself sticking solely with soca music? Well, I, I, I like the dance or music and the lovers rock. But for, for some reason, the, the, um, singing soca, it, it kind of is part of our culture. It more, as opposed to singing dance or it's really hard to break um, from in St. Lucia and probably in the region because everybody knows that. Jamaica is the land where we dance for music. So I try to, what, I would, what I'd like to see being done is kind of we fuse the, the, the dance hall, if it's Lovers Rock, a bit of fusion with the soca, so at least we could, we could have it branded and, and, and probably get it marketed and have some of the have, have another artist on the map because, like you know, we have basically two soca stars on the map, like mm -hmm. Ricky T. And, Teddy St. John. John, right. Yeah. And uh, right now we see that C Deal is making his way. Right. Everyone knows C Deal for Pandemonium, Neighbor, now um, MVP. Yeah. Right. Mm. And so when you get a chance to have downtime and just relax, what are some of the your things that you do to de stress? Well, pray. So the Lord has to give the Almighty thanks. Because um, without Him, 
I would be doing what I'm doing. So after, and I'm, I usually play with my son, um, but meditate, go back into more writing because whatever depresses me actually motivates me into creating more music. And do you have any hobbies besides, you know, your music pursuit? Well, well I do um, landscaping. Everyone knows me as a landscaper also. Yeah. And okay. My work my actually speaks for itself. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, being modest, so we have to look out for your work, right? Yeah. All right. Well, Mysterio, definitely we're going to keep following you. And we see so much coming out. Um, you know, one quick thing, though. For the younger ones out there who are looking to pursue a music career and even just going after something that they're really passionate about, what would you have to say to them? Well, let's remain humble, take time, be persistent, um, and also teamwork. There is no I in team. You have to at least get someone to assist you to, to make you go forward because Without, without, without um, working together, you can never accomplish something. Sometimes you, you may think that you're good, and just that little one line someone else would put to assist you, uh, it would just go a long way. Yeah, so I'd like to say that you should just remain humble, get a team, and keep at it, be persistent. Yeah. Great. So these are words straight from the man Mysterio. Look out for him. Um, where can people find you? Are you on social media? Yeah, uh, Mysterio Music Vibes on Facebook, Mysterio Music on Instagram. Um, you can also get me on Twitter, um, Mysterio. All right, so words straight from the man Mysterio. Go check him out on social media. Follow him to keep up to date with all of his progress. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after the break. Thank you so much for coming back. You're watching This Morning. I'm your host, Chela Mendes. On Carnival Friday, the National Panorama Competition took place, and for the first time ever, a small band hailing from a small community, that's Labry, won the competition. History was made. Congratulations to the Labry Steel side. Let's check out our highlights from Panorama.
I mean, it's related. I'm really from Trinidad. I came to assist the band in terms of drilling the band and doing some workshops. And it's an exciting feeling that the hard work paid off. It was a difficult week that the band had. And they had a lot to go through. Lack of community support, a lack of many things. But um, it's glad that they could pull through and see the positivity and everything after. Tell us what was most challenging for you. The challenging, I mean, I've been here for one week and I saw the police had to come and stop rehearsal or tell them that they can't rehearse for until 10 o'clock. The community wasn't, well, some members of the community wasn't supportive. And I hope that this win would encourage the community to come out and support the band after all this hard work. So now that you all are winners, tell me how your people feel. Well, I mean, we basically proved the masses that were against or who doubted the existence of library. We proved them wrong. Yeah. We accomplished what we came to work for. Yeah. And it's a great feeling. I can go back to Trinidad feeling that I have done something. And I appreciate that. I appreciate the work that the group gave. They did a good job. Will you be back? Hell yeah! <laughs> Definitely. Thank you very much. You're welcome. That was our panorama highlights and that also concludes our show for today. I really hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned because tomorrow, of course, we bring you even more right here on This Morning.